CloudDB, shaping your new normal. Welcome everyone to the 2021 APEC Groundbreakers Virtual Tour by Apaco UC. This year our event will be the biggest one ever done with 144 sessions, including normal sessions, workshops, and hands-on labs like this one from 100 different speakers over 17 days. Also, it will cover sessions in four different languages. Please remember to register to as many sessions as you can. I would like to say thanks to our Oracle user groups in Java user groups that made this event possible, and also to our sponsors, Oracle Groundbreakers, and our main sponsor, CloudDB. Now for today's session, building a shopping cart app in 90 minutes with Oracle Apex, a hands-on labs, presented by our good friends, uh, Sh Shaitanya and Rupesh from Oracle. And if you have any questions of any issues during the event, please feel free to post in the chat. We have myself and Rupesh will be basically assisting everyone with any questions. Also, your emails that you att registered to attend to this session have it been whitelisted by Oracle. And that means that you will be able to register for free to Oracle Cloud to do the hands lab, uh, hands lab, uh, oh, hands on lab, <laughs> apologies, uh, with no issues and have a few things that the team will be covering also during the presentation. Um, other thing, this presentation will be also uh, recorded and will be available for replay until the 30th of December within the platform and everyone that uh, register uh, uh, to the to the to the session afterwards the live session will be also need to be whitelisted i will be coordinating that uh, with the oracle team and you'll be able also to see the video and practice yourself in the chat screen you can see two links right there one is the oracle free one that you will be able to uh, and register to the Oracle free using your email, and it will not ask you for your credit card and nothing because you are whitelisted. And the second link is the labs tutorial material, but the team will be showing that in, in one second. I'm just going to do a call for action, just showing you, uh, everyone, that basically you have a, a link in your screen if you click in the Oracle Cloud, the blue one, they will take you to the uh, in your browser to basically register for free to the Oracle Cloud. And saying that, I will basically just give now the control to our good friend, uh, Shaitanya, and you can start presenting. You is, now I'm showing your screen, Shaitanya. Thank you, Francisco. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen now, okay. I hope you see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen is not on presentation mode, but is, I can see it now in presentation mode, fantastic. All right, thank you so much, Francisco, and thank you so much, uh, APAC OUC, and uh, thank you so much uh, for having me here today uh, for the workshop, building a starter online shopping application using Oracle APEX in 90 minutes. Uh, my initial um, uh, plan was to cover this in 60 minutes, but um, I know that, you know, it's going to be extending anyway. So I would uh, uh, I request Francisco to give me another 30 minutes so I can cover a little bit more. So we'll see um, how many labs we will be able to cover today. And uh, this is me. Uh, my name is Chaitanya. I'm a Senior Principal Product Manager um, in the Oracle Apex team. And on the screen, you see my Twitter handle. So feel free to reach out to me for any questions on Apex or any questions on the database or any questions in database, Oracle database tools as well. So we have a total of 90 minutes of which a few minutes will spend um, uh, knowing about the hands-on lab, knowing about Oracle Cloud and other workshop reviews and other things. And then the rest of the time we will be spending in performing the hands-on lab. So um, I will be walking you through each of the steps, step by step in the hands-on lab guide. Um, and I have my colleague Rupesh and we also have Francisco available. So both of them will be helping you out 
just in case if you have any questions regarding the hands-on lab um, and if you are stuck at any step while, while performing the hands-on lab with me. So the agenda goes here. Uh, we'll get started. We'll get access to Oracle Cloud. Uh, Francisco just mentioned that uh, people who have registered are already being whitelisted. So if you have not got your email uh, ID whitelisted yet, you might want to just reach out to Francisco and then we can help you out with getting whitelisted. The purpose of getting whitelisted is to avoid going through the credit card detail submission. So it should be pretty easy and straightforward for you to sign into Oracle Cloud. And then we also look into accessing the hands-on lab guide where we'll have a quick review of the workshop and uh, we will have um, some little information about Apex application development service. Um, today is pretty much all of the sessions are on Apex, so I'm sure you might have already heard a lot about Apex. And then we will get started with the hands-on lab and finally we'll look at what the next steps are after the workshop. So, <clears throat> getting access to Oracle Cloud. So in the chat window, we already have this particular uh, URL, oracle.com slash free. If you have not noticed that yet, so this is the um, URL and I also have the QR code here for you. So you might want to just open a web browser. Uh, we would suggest Firefox or Google Chrome. Um, it's up to you otherwise, you can use Safari as well, but Firefox or Google Chrome are the preferred uh, browsers. So open a web browser and then you go to oracle.com slash free, enter your name and email and a valid password, company name to get a free tier account. But please do make sure you enter the same email ID that you registered for this event with because I was just mentioning about these accounts are already in our system and so it should be easy to avoid credit card detail submission. Now, in the next step, you should select the cloud account name. This is also the name of the tenancy. So make sure you note, you note this somewhere, maybe in your notepad or maybe just remember it. And then you follow the rest of the prompts to complete your free tier account. So I repeat again, how do you sign into Oracle Cloud or how do you get access to the free trial of Oracle Cloud? This is the first step before we go ahead uh, with proceeding with the hands-on lab because this will take uh, a couple of minutes, like five minutes. So <clears throat> I would encourage you to first sign up for the free Oracle Cloud trial, open a web browser, preferably Firefox or Google Chrome, go to oracle.com slash free, enter your name, email and password, and also your company name. Make sure you enter the same email ID that you registered for this event with. Now you select the cloud account name. This is the name of the tenancy. Make sure you remember it. Follow the rest of the prompts to complete your free tier account. On the screen, you see a QR code also. So just in case if you want to use that, you can use that. Other once you do this, you will get an email. So please go to your inbox and check your email about which talks about the free trial creation for you. So once you finish this, you should be automatically logged into Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Console, OCI Console. If not, then you might want to check your inbox and go through the credentials and then log into Oracle, Oracle Free Trial Account. I'm assuming that you would have gone through these steps if not, if you're having any issues, please feel free to let us know in the chat window and we'll see what we can do. So this will take five minutes. And then at the same time in the browser, uh, you need to open a, a separate tab or maybe if you prefer an, an, another window. We do have another link in the chat window, uh, which is for the hands-on lab guide apex.oracle.com slash go slash shopping cart lab is the shortcut for that. I also have the QR code here. So please scan that or maybe just go to that URL and open it in another web browser or maybe open it in another tab in the your browser. So two things that we need to go ahead. 
First is getting access to Oracle Cloud, which is the free trial account, which will give you some free credits for 30 days. For you to know more about Oracle Cloud, to explore a lot of services in Oracle Cloud, and also gets you access to the Oracle Apex service, the environment where we will be performing the hands-on lab today. And remember that this is free forever and uh, your Apex service will be there uh, forever. And so you should be able to complete your hands-on lab even after uh, we close uh, the workshop today. So this is a, a one-time task for you to sign up for an Oracle free trial account. I'm just going a little bit slow because I know that it will, it will take five to seven minutes. So if you are done with this, or while it is happening, you can just open another tab and then access the hands-on lab guide. apex.oracle.com slash go slash shopping cart lab. Okay, so let me just quickly check my chat just in case if there are any questions and then All right, I see people are signing up. <clears throat> I'll repeat once again. This is a very important task before you go ahead with the hands-on lab. First one is getting access to Oracle Cloud. You will be given a free trial account and with some credits for you to utilize, or free credits for you to utilize. You can explore Oracle Cloud, all of the services, until your um, credits expire. Open a web browser, Firefox or Google Chrome is preferred. Go to oracle.com slash free. Make sure you enter the same email ID that you use to register for the Groundbreakers tool. Because this one is entered into a system and you don't need to go through the credit card detail submission. And then you select the credit cloud account name, the name of the tenancy. Make sure you note it or remember it. Complete the remaining prompts. And then finally, um, you should get an email to your inbox. So please go ahead and check your inbox if you have received an email that a free trial account has been created. You should be automatically logged into OCI console. If not, then please open a browser, use the credentials that you have in your email in the inbox, and then sign into Oracle Cloud. But that is where we are going to perform the steps today. Accessing the lab, this is another task that I would like you to do. So open a browser or maybe in another tab, enter the link that we have on the screen, we also have this in the chat window and we also have the QR code for this. So please, you can scan it and then you can go ahead and then open it. If you have any questions regarding this, please feel free to let my friends know in the chat window. So I'm assuming that um, pretty much everyone has done. And I think I can go ahead with the next steps. All right. So while this is happening, um, we'll go through the slide deck and then we'll come back to, to that step again. What this workshop is all about. In this workshop, we will be creating an online shopping cart application using Apex service, using Apex application development service, which is Apex on cloud. We all know that, you know, basically we all are aware of how an online shopping cart application would look like. We just uh, log into the application and then we go through product categories. We will um, review the products, we review the features, we review the ratings and all those stuff. And then finally, what we do is that we will select a couple of products and maybe categories. And then these things would get added to a cart. Now, once these things get added to the card, next, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, 
you know, go through the next step, which is, um, you know, finalizing the shopping cart, reviewing finally, and then finally uh, clicking the finish button or the proceed to checkout button, whatever. So during this phase, you know, what happens, the next step is it takes you through the payment gateway and, and all those things. And then finally, you will be able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, you will need to be able, able to uh, check out and finally be able to complete the order. And then finally, once the order is completed, you will see um, a notification or a dialogue which is that, hey, X, Y, Z, your order has been finalized and then, you know, it has been sent to the, uh, the merchant and X, Y, Z, some information like that. So we are going to create a typical application, but we are going to create an online starter online application, not be that extensive, but definitely you can expand that. So we're going to give you an idea like, you know, how an online shopping cart application can be quickly created in 60 minutes or 90 minutes using Apex. And as part of that, we have like a couple of labs depending based on the time that we have. Uh, we will be able to complete maybe five or six hands on lab today, six labs today. So the best part is that uh, this lab is available forever and also the environment that you're going to create, which is Apex service will be available forever for you, which is free. So um, although whatever we can finish today, we will finish and the rest of the things you can take it home. Maybe you can, you know, create it, uh, create the rest of the hands on lab at your own convenience. And I'm sure the recording is going to be available for you. So just in case, if you skip any of the step, um, we do have the recording available. The, the hands-on lab guide, I'm sure you would have already noticed, has also got a couple of videos embedded into that. So if you are not able to follow the steps that I'm walking you through today in detail, you can also play back the videos which are part of the um, hands-on lab guide. So um, I'll be walking you through step by step. While I really encourage you to do the steps on your own, you're happy to watch me thoroughly and then do in parallel. At the same time, if you're able to proceed um, fast and you know able to complete them, that's completely fine too, right? You don't need to wait for me to finish it. So what I'll be doing, I'll be walking you through each of the lab and we'll give some time for the rest of the people to complete that. Because I know it's for beginners, sometimes it might they might take a few minutes extra. So in lab one, we'll talk about installing sample tables. We know that every database application needs uh, the underlying tables or the database objects. So we will be installing some sample tables which are shipped with Apex. And then in lab two, we will be adding columns to the products table. We have a products table available and then we we know that you know certain certain times we have to definitely make some adjustments and you know uh, make some changes to the database objects that are being created so we keep doing it depending on the requirements so we will show here how do you add additional columns to an existing table we also work here how to create some lookup tables uh, based on our application specifications and then in lab three we will be creating some additional database objects we'll be creating a package and then finally in lab four, we are going ahead and then creating the application. So that's what we do in lab four. So one, two, three, and four lab labs will occupy most of the time. And uh, next is lab five, which is creating the orders page. So we know that we have to create an orders page. We need to have order confirmation and all these things as part of the shopping cart application. So lab five, we will be creating the orders page and in lab six, we are going to create the shopping cart page. We'll see all of these labs one by one. And then the next steps basically is anything that we have left here, like most likely we'll be able to complete under lab five. Let's assume lab six onwards, <clears throat> you can complete them at your own convenience. Apex application development, uh, as I mentioned, you would have this Today we have a lot of sessions on Apex, so already you would have got what Apex is all about. Um, Apex or Oracle Apex is the local application development platform uh, from Oracle. It's the world's most popular local application development platform for Oracle database. So this Oracle, this local application platform, Oracle Apex, is also available uh, on Oracle Cloud, so along with Oracle Autonomous Database. 
So the world's most popular low-code application development platform, Apex, along with the most popular autonomous database, Oracle Autonomous Database, or the Converged Database, is available along with Exadata Cloud Infrastructure as an all-inclusive low-cost service for you to deploy, to build and deploy your applications. We do have some links about Apex service. We call this in, 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 in short as Apex service or Apex application development service. So we do have some links that talk about Apex service later on. Towards the end, I'll be sharing them. So um, to know more about Apex, I would recommend you to go to apex.oracle.com. So we will be using Apex service or Apex application development service today in our hands-on lab. Um, we will be creating uh, an Oracle Cloud free trial account, which I'm sure you're already been doing it. And once you're done with it, then we will go ahead and then create an Apex service, uh, which is available in Oracle Cloud. So the first thing is getting started, which is option one, creating an Apex service. This URL is already available for you in the chat window, apex.oracle.com slash go slash shopping cart lab, where you will see instructions in getting started and also creating an Apex service. If you are stuck at any point of time today, please post your question in the chat window along with the step, the number of the step, and you know, also the tenancy details like which region, etc., in the chat window for us. All right, so let me just uh, shift my uh, sharing. I would like to show you my browser now. Let me just quickly check if there are any questions. Okay. All right, so I see pretty much um, uh, attendees are creating the free cloud trial accounts and then let me just go ahead now to my actual browser and then show you here. So here, I would like to quickly walk you through how a completed online shopping cart application would look like. So once you finish all of the labs, let me just go to the browser here and go to apex.oracle.com slash go slash shopping cart lab. So this is the one which we are using today in our um, hands-on lab workshop. <clears throat> so as I suggested, please have your Oracle Cloud free trial account um, and as well as your um, hands-on lab guide open as two different tabs in your browser. Let me just quickly show you how will the, um, the completed um, application should will look like once you finish all of the labs. So here we have a total of nine labs and most likely we will cover until five, lab five or lab six today. But once you finish all of them, your hands on your uh, completed application should look like this. So you will have uh, a fasted search page here, which has, you know, um, a department, which is like categories like clothing, color and unit price to your left. And here you see uh, the report, uh, which has got all of the stuff like the products and things like that. And then you have two different categories here. One is a customer, right? Who is actually going through the shopping cart and, you know, adding details like entering the email address and then selecting a store and things like that. And the second type of user we have in the hands-on lab is, administ is the administration. So click administration, you should be able to log in and then you should be able to see all of the um, administrative pages, like, you know, a dashboard, a clothing lookup, color lookup and things like that which we are going to create in the hands-on lab today. So if I click dashboard, for example, it shows me the dashboard page, you know, with different sort of uh, charts available. Like we have the top 10 products, top five stores, product reviews, order status, and things like that. Okay. So this is uh, about uh, getting started. Uh, I mean, uh, the a quick review about the shopping cart application. As I mentioned, we also have the um, the videos available embedded into the hands-on lab guide. So if you are stuck at any point or if you think that you would like to use it later as well, so you should you should be able to play back and then, you know, watch the instructions as how the instructor does in this. So 
um, that's on about a quick intro about uh, the workshop and uh, we will go ahead and then get started now. As I already mentioned, uh, we do have two different types of users that we need to accommodate our roles here to rate the application administrators and customers so we will be creating a user interface which will help both the administrators as well as customers so customers would actually review the products would add the products delete or edit the number of products in their shopping cart and then finally they submit the orders whereas it is administrators responsibility to manage the products customers and stores right and they also should have access uh, to understand or have the analytics of how the products have been doing um, and which stores are performing well and which stores are not performing well and things like that. So we will create the interface to accommodate uh, both the application roles today. All right. So let's go ahead. <clears throat> so getting started, this is the first thing. Just closing this. We already discussed about what Apex is all about and uh, what Apex service is all about. So uh, the first thing is uh, signing up for an Apex workspace and let us see how do we do that. You have already the free cloud trial account created. I'm just going ahead and then use my free trial account cloud.oracle.com. So one, if you already have a free trial account, feel free to use that if you don't have one you should have been uh, creating today uh, by using the same email ID that you have registered for the Groundbreaker store. Okay. So once you create your free cloud trial account, you should be automatically logged into the OCI console. If not, go to your inbox and please uh, review your inbox and then you should be able to get the credentials. So here, creating an Apex application development service so you should be able to uh, log into the uh, automatically log into the OCI console. If you just created your um, your free trial account right now, or else you go to your inbox and you should have received an email. Right, get started now with Oracle Cloud, and then please make note uh, of your username, password, and the cloud account name. The cloud account name is the same as a tenancy name, right? Just in case we have two tenancies, you should be you can change the tenancies. You should see tenancy there. So enter your credentials and then sign into Oracle Cloud. If you already have an Oracle Cloud account, please go ahead and then um, sign in so that you should be able to get started. So I do have a cloud account already. So I'm clicking next and going through the authentication. Sign in. <clears throat> when you are creating a, a free trial account, um, it's highly recommended you choose your nearest region as a home region. Okay. It doesn't matter, but it's suggested to have the nearest region as a home region. So <clears throat> it's easy for you. So the first thing that you do is uh, creating an Apex service and uh, in getting started, you see how do you create an Apex service. From within your cloud environment, which is your OCI console, you'll create an instance of the Apex application development service. We already discussed what this Apex service is all about. This is an all-inclusive service where you get Apex along with Oracle Autonomous Database as the underlying database on Exadata Cloud Infrastructure as an all-inclusive low-cost service for you to build and deploy your Apex applications. Let me just quickly check if anyone is stuck here. Okay. All right, so looks like everything is going fine. And um, so let me navigate you through the steps for creating an Apex service. Bus. We should, this is very important. So the first thing is, um, if you would like to enlarge the uh, hands-on lab guide um, images, you see here um, um, a plus icon over when you hover over uh, a particular screenshot. So clicking that guy would actually magnify the image for you, right? So now let me just go through the steps for this. So from your cloud environment, 
you will be creating an Apex application development service. So click the navigation menu and then you go to developer services and you select Apex instances. And then in the next step, you select a compartment. If you already have an Oracle Cloud account, it should be automatically selected for you. Otherwise, you select a compartment and click create Apex service. In the next step, enable always free option. This is very important. And the another important thing for you is you should be selecting 19C for the database version. Uh, for some of the regions, we also have 21C available. So we highly recommend to use 19C for this hands-on lab. So for this particular hands-on lab, please do select always free and 19C for the database version. We mentioned secret password for the admin password and click create Apex service, but it's completely up to you um, for changing your password, but make sure you remember the password because this is going to be used again in further steps and even uh, when you create your um, Apex workspace and you know your Apex instance administration, things like that. So make sure you remember the password. Once you click Apex, create Apex service, it will be redirected to this particular uh, window where you see the Apex service has been provisioning. And then in two minutes, it should change to available. Okay. And then we'll proceed with the next step. So let me go ahead and then do that in my interface. So I'm going to go to developer, uh, I'm going to go to um, developer services and I see Apex application development and Apex instances. So just click this guy. Okay, now the next step is I'm going to click create Apex service. You might want to change the database name. I will leave it as is. If you see that I didn't select the compartment, it was already uh, by default selected for me. In your case, you should select a compartment as mentioned in um, step five, sorry, step four. Okay, so let me go ahead now and uh, choose always free, turn on that if it is not turned on and choose database version as 19C. And then I give uh, the password Okay, let me just give the password. Sorry. How oh, bunch of passwords to use? So just going to use that. Okay. Just taking um, browser issue. So just bear with me for a second. Confirm password again, scroll down a bit, right? And then just click create Apex service. So now it shows provisioning for me and it just shows, it will show available in two minutes. So in the meantime, let's go through the um, guide again. And then let me just quickly check on the chat too. It looks like pretty much everyone is able to do that. If anyone has done until this step, can you please message in the chat window if you are thorough with this? So that shows that, you know, we're in good shape now to go ahead with the next steps. Any one of you or, or all of you who have done this step, can you please ping in the chat window to let me know that you're done until this step successfully? I'll go through, I'll, I'll get to the chat window again in a few minutes. Okay, so the next step for us is uh, to create a workspace. So this changes from provisioning to available. And then in step seven, you click launch Apex. And then uh, you should be able to click navigate to the sign into administration. I recommend to ignore this particular step, which is about, uh, which talks about, you know, stopping the instance details and all. You can review that later on. So go to step eight, where you sign into administration and then you enter the same password. Remember, I asked you to remember, note that. So enter the same password here and then you click create workspace. When you create workspace, it asks you for database username, enter 
um, demo or whatever that you think, you know, maybe your name or maybe your organization name or whatever. And then you should see that the same would be selected, the same would pop up, the uh, same would be uh, available as you see for the workspace name. So database username is uh, the same as the workspace name here in Apex service. And then you enter your password. Uh, again, remember the password, make sure so, because this is going to be used as you run your applications, okay? And then once you do that, click create workspace, and then finally, you will be able to click the workspace name in the instance administration, log into that using the credentials, and then that's it, you're ready for your hands on that. So that's what it means, let me just see. Uh, if anyone is done through until this step, please let me know in the chat window. Okay, it's still showing provisioning for me. It just take uh, some time maybe. Let me load this and see if that's available. Yeah, it's available now for me. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. So if it still continues to show provisioning for you, you might want to just quick right click and then just reload your page and then uh, you should see that available so i'm performing the next steps which is launching apex so click launch apex and then here it will navigate me through the instance administration where i enter my password remember the password that i used for creating the database there so assign into administration and then the next step is creating a workspace. Click create workspace. I like to create a workspace, let's say as low code. Um, you see that the same thing would come here. And uh, enter my password here. And then click create workspace. So now my workspace will be created. So to build your applications in Apex, you need a private workspace area, and that is what a workspace is. It's part of the database, which is available for you to build your application. So we call that as workspace in Apex. So you created a workspace right now for you to continue to build your applications. As mentioned in the step, we'll just click low code here. I mean the workspace name here, and that navigates me to the um, workspace login page so click sign in and now you see that uh, i have logged into the instance and uh, sorry in the workspace in my apex workspace and i'm ready to go ahead and then perform the steps in my hands on that so i don't need the oci console page anymore so i'm just uh, closing that so all i need is my workspace page now so let me just go back and see so if anyone has done until this step, please let us know in the chat window. Are you able to do this? Are you able to perform until this step? Okay. All right. So hoping that you are through this step. <clears throat> yes, I see one person's one response yet. Great. So let me just go ahead now and then do the rest of the steps. So we are through the getting started. We have completed the getting started now. So let's go ahead and then do the next, or the first lab actually, which is installing the sample data set. You see here, I have my um, hands-on lab guide open and in parallel to my workspace page here. So we created a workspace now. We are ready to go ahead and do the actual hands-on lab now. So the first lab talks about installing a sample data set, right? We need some sample tables, uh, database tables, and the database objects for us to uh, create a database application. And that is exactly what we are going to configure today. I mean, like, we are going to install some sample data sets. So for every hands-on lab, for every lab, you see this particular expand and collapse all tasks. So expand all tasks. And you also see that in the left navigation menu. So this lab has got two quick uh, tasks. And the total time that you might need is just five minutes. So let's quickly finish them. So creating customer orders tables, because we are creating an online shopping cart application, we are going to ut utilize the customer orders table, which is available um, in Apex. 
So you log into your workspace, which we already did. From your workspace homepage, you need to go to SQL Workshop. Then you click Utilities and then choose Sample Datasets. And then you see Customer Orders row. So click Install for Customer Orders. Click Next. And then click Install Dataset. And then after installing Dataset, you should see a screen where you have Create Application and Exit. We don't want to create application at this stage because we still have some other prerequisites that we need to figure out, we need to fix before we create application in Lab 4. So at this point of time, we just want to click Exit and uh, we review the database objects immediately. So once you are done, let's go to the task 2. So what I would do now is I go to SQL Workshop and I go to Utilities. I see um, sample data sets and I see here customer orders so here you see um, install click this install button and then the schema name is selected by default and then clicking install data set clicking install data set will install all of the database objects which includes the tables as well as the views as which is available as part of the sample data set for me. Like we have customers, stores, products, orders under this table, order items. We also have a bunch of views like customer order products, store orders, store order status, product orders, and product reviews, which we will be using in our hands-on lab today. So you can click create application, but we don't want to do that right now. We're clicking exit. Now, the database objects have been installed. What do you do in task two? In task two, you're going to review the database objects. So now that we have created uh, database objects, let's go ahead and then review them. SQL Workshop, and then you go to Object Browser, then you click New Tables and various tabs, such as Data Constraints, and you review the table details. So let's do that now. Okay, so SQL Workshop. Remember, I uh, just want to let you know that we have like four modules you see once you log into the apex workspace you see app builder this is the location where you actually create your applications your new applications or you 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 make changes to the application and all this stuff you do in app builder and then sql workshop is the one which you use to query your database like you have sql commands where you enter your sql statements and run them on your database you also have SQL um, scripts, which you use to create uh, your, you know, tie, uh, stitch together your, your SQL statements and you create a script and then run the script so that you, you do that for your DDL, DML statements, or maybe sometimes you for all of the other PL SQL objects, database objects. And then you also have team development, which we kind of uh, take a look later. And we also have gallery, which navigates you to the GitHub page where we have um, a bunch of uh, Apex applications, sample applications, and productive applications for you to install in Apex. Okay, so right now let's go to SQL Workshop and we have something called as Object Browser, which you use to review the database objects. So these are the tables that we have created. If you want to review the views, you can go here and then view the views also. So let's take a look at the tables which we are going to use in our hands-on lab. Let's say, for example, let's review the products table. So when you click that, um, in the detail pane, you see table, data, indexes, constraints, and all these things. So this is the table definition. You click data, you see the sample data which has been installed. And then you also have constraints, which you see the constraints available. Okay, just click this, wait. Okay, so this is how you review your database objects. You can also take a look at the orders table. Okay, so this completes lab one where you install the sample dataset and you also review the database objects. Let me just quickly see if anyone is done. Okay, someone is, uh, looks like people are going through the steps and then performing it. So let me just navigate to my screen and just give you two minutes of time to finish this. So we created, we installed the sample data set in this lab. Let's wait for two minutes and then we'll 
start again for the next lab. So what we did in this um, hands-on lab so far is we reviewed what an Apex service is all about, what Apex application development service is. And then we um, signed up for Oracle Cloud free trial account. And um, we have got, um, we, we created, um, we navigated to the OCI console. And then uh, from the left navigation menu, we look for developer services. Then we created an Apex service. As part of creating Apex service, we mentioned um, it is a free service, a free trial, and as also always free and also um, mentioned that it is a 19C. And then we have input the, the password for the database. And then afterwards, um, it shows as uh, provisioning. It turns to available in two minutes, and then um, you go ahead and then launch uh, Apex. Once you launch Apex, it navigates you to the Apex instance administration. And then in the instance administration, you input the same password, again, what we used for creating the database or the, uh, the Apex service. And then <clears throat> that navigates you to the create workspace page. You need a workspace to build your applications. So you click create workspace and then you enter your database username there, which is the same as the workspace name. And then you enter a password there that creates a workspace for you. You click the workspace name and then you're navigated to the workspace homepage. Now within the workspace homepage, what you did is you navigated to a SQL workshop because you want to install some sample tables for your application. So you went to SQL workshop utilities and then you install the orders, um, some customer orders at data set. And then upon installing the order data set, it asks you for to create application or exit. You choose to exit. And then in the next step, you would like to, you wanted to review the database objects. So you guy navigated to SQL workshop and you went to object browser and then you reviewed the table definition as well as the sample data installed for you. All right. So, so far, this is what we have completed. Let's move ahead with the next step, the next lab. Lab two is adding columns to the products table. Okay, so this also has got a couple of uh, tasks in it. So we have three tasks. Let us proceed one by one. So as you see, we have created a products table and we have installed the products table, which includes image, price and details. But we also need certain other characteristics for our shopping cart application. Like we would like to know the product, color, type of clothing, department and things like that. So that means we would like to have, um, we would like to add additional columns to the product table, okay? Now, to avoid data redundancy, we also would like to create three additional tables, which we call as a lookup table. So we use the create lookup table feature in Apex for this. So first thing is creating the columns. And second thing is populating the new columns. And third step is, uh, third task is creating the lookup table. So we complete these three labs as um, as part of this hands on lab now all right so let's expand all tasks so you learn how to add new columns to the existing table you also learn how to populate new columns we'll run a script there and then we also create the cup tables so task one is adding columns so what we do is we go to sql workshop go to object browser go to the products table and then you click add column, you add a column, enter a name and you select the data type. You also enter the length and then you proceed with clicking next and finally click next. So in the same fashion, you add department, you also add clothing column. So we'll be adding three columns and that completes a task one in lab two. So shall we proceed with that? So let's go ahead and then let's click products table. We have to add a column, click add column. And let's see what's the first column that we have to add. The first column that we have to add is color. Okay, so I'm going ahead and adding the color column. Data type is varchar, length is 200. And then click next. And then click finish. Similarly, we'd like to add one more column. 
this time it's going to be department see my can work out length is 200 click next and then click finish two columns have been added let's add the third column now clothing work out and 200 is the length and then click next and then finally finish that's pretty much it's as simple as that okay so the next thing that we do is uh, task 2 which is populating the new columns and here we're going to use SQL scripts right so now that we have the columns available we should populate that with data and for that we're going to use the script that we already have here so we need to navigate to SQL workshop go to SQL scripts click create and then click uh, enter a script name populating new columns you can choose whatever and then you copy the following script and paste it into the editor you see a copy button uh, for step 5 click that guy and then that copies the text to your clipboard okay so basically what the script does is it uh, inserts unique product values like shirt jacket skirt etc into the clothing column and it also inserts uh, the unique department names and color names into the department and color respectively so this is using uh, the JSON product details column in the products table. So it is fetching details from the JSON uh, product call details column and then it is including that in the remaining three columns which is the clothing department and the color. And then you click run, click run now, the script gets uh, run and then finally you see the statements are processed and then that's it. Finally, we'll review the, if it really got added or not by running the SQL query. So let's go ahead and then now this time SQL workshop, SQL scripts. And then I create a new script here. Populating new columns. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna add some add the copied script here. So I just copied the script from there. So I'm gonna add it here okay and then i click uh, run run now and then i see that this is successful so one statement processed and uh, with the zero error so it is successful now for me and the data has been inserted so now i would like to go ahead and then see that if the data has really been inserted into that so let me just copy this particular query which is in step 10 so which selects the product name, unit price, color, and department clothing, and then you should be able to see that. So now here, go to SQL workshop, SQL commands, and then enter that, run that, you should be able to see the details, okay? So it's picked up from the JSON product details, column from the products table, and inserted those data into the uh, department clothing and color columns of the products table okay so now we have completed task two let's uh, go ahead with task three which is creating the lookup tables so we do have multiple products we will have definitely have multiple products and uh, they may have the same values for color department and clothing so as such what we need to do is that we would like to avoid data redundancy we would like to create some kind of lookup tables now creating lookup table is uh, pretty easy so all you do is uh, just go to the table in sql workshop and you see a create lookup table button clicking that it will ask you for which column on which column are you going to create the lookup table on like for example here the first thing we choose is color and then clicking next what will happen it will ask you for the new table name and the new sequence we're not going to change anything just accepting the default as is then we click next and we click create lookup table okay once you create the lookup table <clears throat> you navigate back to the products table and click the lookup table button again because we'd like to create for color and department as well okay so uh, clothing color and department all right so let's do that and then once you do that then you can go back and see that um 
The columns color department and clothing are renamed to color ID, department ID, and clothing ID in the products table because it has been moved and then data type is changed to number now. So to uh, bring in uh, the relationship now. So let's go ahead, go to the products table, go to SQL workshop object browser, go to the products table. And here you see create lookup table. Okay, so the first thing is creating a lookup table chooses the color column. So I selected color column, click next. And then you see here it is uh, showing me the new table name and also the new sequence name. So all good. Click next and finally click create lookup table. Okay, so this is done. Again, I, you see that the create color lookup table has been created with color ID and color. Now if you go to products, you see color ID has been added and which is data type is number. So this happens once you create the lookup table. Now we also want to create two more lookup tables. So go ahead and then click create lookup table. Now this time we're going to pick up the department column, click next, click next again, and then click create lookup table. So the lookup table has been created. And then now you go to products table again, and you see here, there is a department ID. Now, let's go ahead and then create another lookup table. Create lookup table. Clothing. Next. Next again. And then click create lookup table. So we have three lookup tables created now. And then you go to products page again. Products uh, table again. You see clothing ID. So color ID, department ID, and clothing ID are the three um new columns with the uh, number data type and you see here clothing lookup color lookup and department lookup tables have been added so that completes lab two which is adding columns to the products table let me just go back and then see if any any questions no questions so i'm assuming that um everyone is doing fine and uh, they're going and uh, proceeding with the steps so pretty straightforward instructions for you. So please uh, go ahead and then perform the next steps. You do not need to wait for me. Let's just go ahead and just give two minutes time for people to complete, people who haven't done yet. Add in columns to the products table. So what we have done in this lab, in the previous lab, we loaded sample data sets, which is uh, the customer orders, which includes a table called products. Now, whatever columns that are available with the existing product table doesn't suffice our requirements for the application. So we wanted to add new columns, like we wanted to add a department column, we wanted to add a clothing column, we wanted to add a color column as well. And also, they should have some data in it. So what we did is we navigated to SQL Workshop, you know, object browser, and then we went to products table. So we see there create a column so add column and then we added columns and not just adding columns later on in task two what we did is that we utilize the existing sql script um, in the hands-on lab and uh, we copied the the code which actually fetches the data the sample data from the json product details um, column in the uh, products table and then inserts that into the new three new columns. So we did that, we ran the SQL script and then the data got inserted and then we reviewed the table definition again. We reviewed the, the we, we ran a SQL query to review the data. And then finally in task three, what we did is we wanted to create some lookup tables to avoid data redundancy because we will be using the same um, information, the same details uh, for a lot of, um, um, you know, different types of clothes and different types of, uh, you know, categories and different, different varieties of uh, the product. So we wanted to have some lookup tables to have their independent tables and said, okay, let's go ahead and create some lookup tables. So we went to the products table and we see there a create lookup table uh, a tab. Click that and then we choose uh, clothing, color and department. And then that created as lookup tables. And we also notice that the products table has been modified accordingly. So that's what we did in lab two. Let's go ahead and then do lab three quickly now.
So hoping there are no questions. Questions so far, looks like everything is going fine. All right, so let's go ahead with lab three now, which is creating database objects. So, so far we have created um, tables and we also more modify the tables. We also need to do some more things for our shopping cart. So here, what we're going to do, we are going to create some database objects to use in the Apex application. So we're basically creating a package which contains functions and procedures to add products to the cart, remove products, creating the order and clearing the cart and many more. So we use something called as collections here. You want to know more about collections, click the link over there available in the hands-on lab guide. So which enable you to temporarily store your products in currently in session state so that you can access them, process, manipulate them and process them during a user specific session. So all you do here is uh, create a package. There's going to be only one task and then you will be um, done with lab tree. So we will go to SQL workshop object browser and then we'll create a package. We'll create a package specification and we give it a name. Then we have the package specification available. We copy that guy and then we will uh, go ahead and then click create package specification. And then the next step is we navigate to the body part of the package. Okay. And then we enter the, the, the script, which we have to copy again from the hands-on lab guide. And then finally, we're going to save and compile that. Okay. But once that is done, uh, we are done with creating the database objects. All database objects required for creating the application. And then we can go ahead with the next lab. Okay. So here, um, you don't need to understand the code completely what we are doing. But all you need to understand is that we are going to use collections here, which is an Apex uh, specific one, which allows you to temporarily store uh, things, uh, the products here, in this case, in session session state so that they can be easily accessed and manipulated or processed during a user-specific session. So that is what he's going to do. So let's go ahead and then go to object browser and you see here a plus icon. So this is called as a create button. So click create and then we need to create a package. Okay. It asks you whether you would like to create a specification body or package with that with methods on database tables like to accept the default create package specification give it a name manage orders and then click next okay so it gives me some default guy stuff and then so i'm going to clear all these things and then paste the ones which i just copied and click create package specification Okay, so now what I do is I have a package specification available, but I would like to also change the body. Okay, so what I'm going to do is in this step here, in step seven, you need to navigate to the body part of the cap package by clicking on body tab and enter the following code. So I just copy in step seven, the code that should be used for the body tab and then afterwards i go here and then i paste it here and once i paste it here i have the package specification i have the package body now i say click save and compile pl sql code successfully compiled so that completes my lab which is lab three okay so what we have done here um in lab three we wanted to create an additional um, database object so we go, went ahead and then created uh, we went to sql workshop um, object browser where we, we were reviewing the products table so we click the plus icon we created uh, a package specification we copied uh, the code from uh, the hands-on lab guide which is in step five we created the specification then we also um, wanted to create the body of the PL SQL package. So we clicked uh, the body tab and then we copy pasted the code from step seven for body. And then finally we click save and compile. So that is what we did so far in this particular hands on app. Okay, so let's see where we are. No questions.
it looks like everything is going fine so far okay let's stop for one minute or two minutes understand what we did here so the steps are pretty easy and straightforward you don't need to wait for me you can go ahead and complete the steps we also have the videos available over there just in case you feel stuck i'm sure um, you're having a great experience uh, watching me uh, walking you through the hands-on lab and also um, you are really um, happy to see that and you are you are, you, are, you were very glad to see that how quickly we uh, created an apex instance um, from the free free trial account and then how quickly we started with uh, you know building the database objects and quickly we finished all this stuff so and then uh, it will be very interesting to see how quickly we are going to build an application as well in the next uh, step in the next slide so so far we have done lab one lab two and lab three installing sample data set making some changes to the college the products table and creating lookup table and then we created a database package which will actually using collections um, to store temporarily in a session state and also manipulate and process the data so next one is creating the application all right so let's go ahead and do that we have 20 minutes left creating the application which is lab form so far we have the data structures available now based on the data structure we are going to build um, a table uh, uh, an application here this has got almost 11 steps so quite a detailed one so let's finish this and then see if we have time we can go ahead and do um, lab file as well okay so you will be creating an application using the existing tables and data that you have already installed so the task one is creating an application in the app builder menu click app builder click create click new application and you name the application as acme shop this is task two let's finish that so i'm navigating you to the apex uh, home page okay you see here app builder app sql workshop team development and gallery either you can pick up from this like uh, app builder create or you can just go to app builder here click that guy you can either create click create because we don't have any applications created yet so it shows uh, create a new app once you build an application it this will does this doesn't show up in your uh, workspace home page okay you might be wondering just in case uh, why my screen is in dark mode so i have it enabled here um, I, I guess um, you will have this one automatic so if you want to have the same um, mode that i do have you can just uh, go to here uh you know, that means like here you just click your workspace name and you see here dark mode okay just a tip for you so click create and you can create uh, two different types of applications. You can create an application from scratch, which is uh, building um, some tables and you know data, and then on top of that, you're building an application. Um, the other option for you is to create an application from a file, which is can be a CSV, XLSX, XML, or a JSON file. And you can also copy and paste data and then create an application. This is one of the uh, most widely used use cases of Apex of converting a spreadsheet into an, a full-fledged functional web application, which is uh, from a file. So in hands-on lab today, we're going to use, um, we already have built the database objects. So we're going to go ahead and click create new application. So sometimes what you do is maybe you can just create a blank application and then you come back and create database tables and, you know, insert sample data into that. But here we did we started with uh, actually modeling we we actually started with understanding the requirements so we know that for the shopping cart we want customer orders we install all the tables we also have the sample data we also made some adjustments to the database objects and then finally we wanted to create the application so we are here creating the application right now give it a name acme shop okay so far we are done with task two so we name the application and then we have the remaining tasks in this hands on lab. So the first one, which is in task three, we need to add a dashboard page. Apex gives you a lot of uh, pages, you know, built in, like, you know, it gives you options to create different types of pages. 
As you see on the screen here, you can create a dashboard, you can create a calendar, cards, charts, fasted search form, interactive grid, and so many other things. Apex is the local application development tool. So you use minimal code to build your application, to build your pages, to build your reports, your forms and charts and whatnot. So you'll be hardly using any code here and you might need to use a little bit of snippets here and there, of course. So in this task, what we are going to do is we're going to create a dashboard. Dashboard, basically, we, we have here a couple of charts available as dashboard. By default, it allows you to create uh, four different types of charts, okay? Four charts, basically. So in this hands-on lab, we're going to create, um, uh, you know, top 10 products. And we also create a chart for top 10, uh, top five stores and order status and also for product reviews. Remember, I've demonstrated the sample completed application for you, which had a dashboard, which has all, all of these four charts available. So that is exactly what we are going to create right now. Quite interesting, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Create application. So click add page under page, and you're going to pick up dashboard page. Once you click dashboard, you see that you can create four charts here. Let's do one by one, chart one. So chart one is, um, what exactly is that? So that is a bar chart and you want to have top 10 products and you want to select the product orders name from that. So top 10 products and you want to have a bar chart, select bar charts, table or view, you want to choose um, product orders for that and you want to choose the label as product name and uh, you would like to have sum and you would like to have total sales sorry what is that yeah total sales so you have bar chart you have top 10 products and uh, you have a product orders as a table name and you have the label column as product name and you choose the column uh, function and uh, sorry sum as a function and then you have a value column which is total sales now let's add one more chart which is a pie chart this time so go ahead and then for chart two it's going to be a pie chart and then here what are we going to use we're going to use top five stores top five stores and then we're going to select uh, orders store orders for the table name and um, what exactly it's store name and sum and total sales store name sum and we also have total sales so chart two is completed let's go ahead with chart three now what exactly are we going to build there chart three it's a pie chart again, and we would like to have order status. It's a pie chart, and uh, order status is the name. Customer order products, order status. We like to choose customer order products, order status, and count and order ID. Count, and we have order ID. Okay, so chart. Three also is completed. Let's go to chart four now. So what do you would like to have for chart four? We would like to have a bar chart again, and we give it a name, product reviews. Table or name as uh, product reviews again. And then we're going to be using product name and uh, product name, column value, and then average rating. So that I think that's, that's pretty much. And then once you have all the four charts available, you want to set this as an administration page. Remember, we have two different users uh, application roles for this application. One is customers and second one is administrators. So we need to have certain pages set as administration page. Okay, so set as administration page. Go ahead, advanced, and then set as administration page and set add page. 
actually we forgot to do one step in the dashboard um, in the oh yeah we have to have one more thing to do here pages administration page. all right so that's that's pretty much true so we have completed task three which is adding a dashboard page now task four is adding the products page so let's do what we have here we got to add a page which is a facet search. Remember, I demonstrated the sample application which has a facets to the left side and right side is a default. So we got to create that particular page which is a facet search page. Apex allows you to build different types of uh, reports like you know interactive reports, interactive grids, facet search, and cards, and smart filters and search which is available in Apex 21 too as well. So this version of uh, Apex which we are using here right now. On the cloud is Apex 21.1, and so let's have go ahead and create a faster search page. So let's go ahead, click Add Page, click Faster Search, and enter products, which is products is the name, and they would like to have cards. Okay, and then uh, we need to select the table products and select a grid and product name so grid is selected by default select products as the table great product name is selected by default body column is showing up image mime type we don't have want to have because we're going to manip we're going to change this later in the report so let's just pick that one and then scroll down um, we need to do some more thing we need to set this as home page okay so let's go ahead advanced because we would like to have this you remember we saw that the first time when we log in to this application we saw the fasted search page so that is nothing but a home page right so setting this as a home page and then clicking add page so that should do so that completes our task four now task five is deleting the original home page. We now created, we now made products page as the home page. So we don't want the default home page, which is given by Apex. So what we do is in task five, we click edit and then we click delete so that we can delete the existing home page. So here you see the existing home page. We don't want this guy because products page is already set. So I'm going to click edit and then I'm going to delete the existing. So I now only have products and dashboard page. So that completes uh, task quite. Let's see if there are any questions. No questions, all good. So next step is adding multiple reports. Okay. So uh, what we do is we go to the application wizard again. We click add page and we want to add multiple reports in one go, okay? And uh, we're going to use um, particular tables, clothing lookup, color lookup, customers, department lookup, product review, stores. And then we're going to create reports on top of these. And then once we do that, then, then comes task seven. Let's do that. So let's go ahead and click add page. And you see here underneath that additional pages. Scrolling down a bit, you see multiple reports click this guy and then you see here a bunch of tables available for us so what do we need we want clothing lookup color lookup customers clothing lookup color lookup customers then we'd like to have department lookup product reviews and stores department lookup product reviews and stores and click add pages okay so this completes um task six where you see a lot of pages now okay so now what we do in task seven is setting all these multiple reports as administration pages we already set the dashboard page as an administration page we would like to set these pages as administration pages as well now so we edit each of these pages now and then set them as administration page and that is task seven let's go ahead so let's go to um, clothing lookup click edit it's as simple as that just simple very simple to do that so here advanced 
set as administration page. Save changes. Similarly, for color to come, advanced, set as administration pages, save changes. Similarly, for customers, advanced, set as administration page, save pages. Department lookup, advanced, set as administration page, save changes. Similarly, for product reviews, advanced, set as administration page, save changes. And then finally, for stores, advanced, set as administration page, save changes. Done. All right. So now, <clears throat> well, we completed uh, task seven, which is setting all these uh, um, pages as administration pages. Okay. Task eight is managing the products page, adding the managed products page. And apart from um, the products page, we would like to have an add managed products page. So what we do is click add page. This time we're going to use an interactive report. Remember, I told you that we can create different types of pages, different types of reports, which includes interactive report. So create interactive report. What exactly are we trying to do here? Enter manage products, we choose products and include form. So manage products and we choose products, include form and uh, for lookup columns, we need to choose clothing ID, department ID and color ID. So lookup columns clothing id and the display column is uh, clothing department id the display column is uh, department and we have um, color id the display column is color anything else so we need to set this also as an administration page and then click add page so scrolling down advanced set as administration page and click add page. Okay, so this completes task eight for us. And task nine, we have a set of features which are available for us, which we can include in our application, things like access control and all these things. So here we would like to have an access control um, role-based user authorization. So we would like to include that. So under features, check access control. So if you scroll down here, you see feature. So access control is what we want. We also have other options like activity reporting, configuration options and feedback and things like that. So we choose access control as a feature and that completes task nine. Now task 10 of this is uh, finish creating the application to scroll down and click create application. And then finally you run the application. And task 11 is actually running the application. Let's see. So click create application. It shows the application creation progress for us. Creating all of the pages that we just uh, created in the application wizard. A create application wizard is a one-stop shop where you actually do all the stuff. Right? Remember, we just uh, created dashboard page. We created a products page. We created a, you know, uh, we made that as a home page and we also created a bunch of other uh, reports. We also have got uh, a product swamp, managed product swamp. So all of them we could create, uh, create in one location, in one wizard and you can create application wizard. So now this application is available for us. So run the application. So let us run the application and then you enter your username and password. Apex allows you by default it is using Apex credentials. You can also hook up your LDAP, you can use your SSO authentication, you can also use your own social authentication with Apex, and you can also have your own custom authentication with Apex. Okay, so click sign in, and then you see this particular thing, and then you can just go ahead and look at, this is the products page that we have, which is a, a faster search page. We also have administration that we built in, which has got all the administration pages, okay? So I think we are almost there. 
we have built an application right now and then in lab five and lab six you're going to create an order page and create the shopping cart page i think uh, <clears throat> that's pretty much that we can do for today and then um, we will review quickly what you're going to do in the next two labs so so far we have created the application and then we next step we have to create an orders page where you create a page to review the items in the order and then in lab six you're going to uh, you know create some a shopping cart page where you uh, create application items you create a process and you finally create the shopping cart page so actually um, this is all about the hands-on lab so far in today's uh, workshop I would highly recommend you to perform the rest of the steps the lab 5 lab 6 lab 7 lab 8 lab 9 so we have completed we have installed the data sets we have installed we made some changes to the products table we created database objects and we created the application as well today just give you so i would highly encourage you to follow us on twitter uh, we have uh, oracle apex hashtag we have blogs which is blogs.oracle.com apex we are available on twitter we are also available on facebook and youtube as well if you want to learn more about Apex, I encourage you to go to apex.oracle.com where you see all the short codes on Apex service. I'll also try to be a part of the Apex community, we'll review the consulting companies, um, you know, the applications that we have, the commercial applications that we have, a blog post, and we also have a bunch of hands-on lab available for you to perform on your Apex service or apex.oracle.com. So apex.oracle.com slash hols will take you to that location. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for having me here today. And uh, you can always contact me on LinkedIn and Twitter. And you can have your questions to me about APEX or Oracle Database Tools or Oracle Database, Oracle Autonomous Database, and also especially about Oracle APEX Service. Thank you so much, uh, Shaitanya. Um, and of course, if the people doing the labs uh, do after the this session doing yep. the next one six seven eight nine and so have any issues it's okay for them to contact you or rupesh by twitter absolutely please feel free to reach out to us we are happy to help you out you are stuck anywhere fantastic and also they can contact me if you they cannot get reach of them and i can get a uh, reach of of shaitanya and rupesh uh, yep. no problem at all no problem. okay Thank you so much. Uh, any attendees has any questions of any comments to the speakers? Arun, Erica, any questions? Looks like not, no problem. In that case, thank you so much, Rupesh, Shaitani, and everyone. Please uh, take care and be safe, and hopefully we can start having uh, hands on face to face again in the near future. And see you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Francisco. Bye for now. Right. Have a wonderful day or evening or morning, depending who you where you are. Cheers. You too. You too. Bye. Right. Cloud DB, shaping your new normal.